Okay, so here is a situation that involves Coulomb's law. Um, and remember, Coulomb's law is simply uh, this equation, um, F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Um, it's an equation used for finding the force between two charges. So what we have um, in this problem are two metallic spheres that uh, each have an identical charge. Um, we're told in the problem that uh, each sphere is given the same charge and it doesn't matter if they're plus and plus or minus and minus um, because like charges repel either way plus plus or minus minus so let's just say that uh, both of these spheres are positive so that's a positive sphere and that's a positive sphere um, we're given <clears throat> this angle here this theta is eight degrees uh, and that's true on both sides. So this is kind of a, a reflection of itself. The right side and the left side are, are completely identical. Um, we're given the length of the string as 40 centimeters, so 0.4 meters. 40 centimeters is 0.4 meters. That's true on this side as well. And then we're also given the mass of um, each sphere. So the mass of each sphere is 0.5 kilograms. That's true for both. Okay, um, the way that we're going to solve this, um, the first question is find the tension in the string. Uh, each string has the same tension. Uh, so this is going to be solved by doing a free body diagram and then summing the forces in the x and y direction. And then um, from the equations that we get from summing the forces, we can solve for um, both of these these uh, questions. So um, which sphere to focus on? Do we, do we focus on the, the left sphere or the right sphere? It really doesn't matter because the same thing is happening to each sphere. If we look at this left sphere, uh, there's tension. We got tension like that. Uh, we have mg down. And then uh, the third force is the electrostatic force which is causing these spheres to uh, repel each other. And that's, um, we'll just label this EFE -E for electrostatic. And that's what this is. This over here, this is the equation for finding the force between two charges. Um, the sphere on the right, we got the same thing going on. We got tension, we've got MG, and we've got the electrostatic force which is causing the spheres to stay apart from each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and just focus on, uh, I'm going to use the sphere on the right. I'm going to use this guy. So let me clean this up here. Get our diagram clean. All right, so I'm going to be focusing on the uh, sphere on the right, but like I said, we could, we, we could get the correct answer by focusing on the sphere on the left because the same thing is happening to each sphere. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to do a free body diagram uh, for the sphere on the right. So looking at the sphere on the right, uh, the, the diagram looks like this. So we have tension going up like this at an angle. We have mg straight down. And then we have the electrostatic force between the charges. And then that's equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Now here's the thing. <clears throat> We're told that these charges are identical. This Q and this Q uh, are the same Q. So what we can do is instead of writing K, Q1, Q2, if, if these charges are identical, uh, this would just be Q squared. You know, Q times Q. Let's just change this to K, Q squared over R squared. And that's going to simplify things. So this becomes K, Q squared over R squared. All right, and then um, if this is 8 degrees, so I'm going to make a triangle here. So if we, if we look at this triangle here, this is 90, which means this has to be 82. So on this diagram over here, this angle in here is 82 degrees. 
All right, so that's the free body diagram. Now the, the next thing after a free body diagram is to sum the forces. So I'm going to sum the forces in the x direction and sum the forces in the y direction. Okay, in the x direction we have two forces. So I'm going to draw the components in red for uh, T. So tension has an x component and a y component. Uh, and also, let's put in the sign convention. The sign conventions will be this, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, so in the x direction, we have two forces. We have the electrostatic force, which is K Q squared over R squared. And then we have the x component of tension, which is cosine 82 times T. The sum of the forces always equals MA, and this is an X acceleration. These spheres, uh, we're told right here that the spheres are in equilibrium, and uh, recall that equilibrium means not accelerating, so we can cross the acceleration to zero. That acceleration is zero. So we'll just put zero here. Okay, so this is our X equation. All right, uh, in the y direction, we have two forces. We have the y component of tension, and we have mg. So the y component of tension is sine 82, sine 82t, and then mg is down, minus mg. And again, the sum of the forces equals ma, where that's a y acceleration, but there is no acceleration in the y direction, so a is zero. So we can just change all of this to just zero. The summation of the forces in the y. Okay, so um, to me this is the hard part, getting this done. Uh, from here the rest is algebra. So we're first going to solve for the tension in the string. We can get the tension in the string from this y equation. So rearranging this y equation, we get mg over sine 82. Um, so the M is 0 0.5, gravity is 9.8, and s over sine of 82. So this comes out as 4.9482. 4 4.9482 uh, newtons. That's the tension in both strings, in each string. Okay, now <clears throat> solving for the charge, what's the magnitude of the charge on each sphere? We're now going to be solving for Q, uh, but one thing that we're going to have to figure out is this R right here. Um, R is the distance between the charges, so from this charge all the way over to the other charge. We need to solve for the distance between them, which is not really um, a difficult thing. Um, so we're going to focus on this triangle. We're going to focus on one triangle, and we can figure out what this distance is, the base of this triangle. Um, the base of the triangle is going to be, let's see, get some room here, go down here. Uh, the base of that triangle is going to be cosine 82 times the hypotenuse, which is 0.4. And that comes out to be 0 0.0557. That's equal to 0 0.5, oops, sorry, 0 0.0557. Uh, that's this distance, so R is going to be double that. Uh, both sides are identical. So this R here comes out to be 0. 1113. Okay, this is the distance between the two charges, and we, we got that just from doing trig. All right, so on to figuring out Q. So uh, keep in mind, we now know the tension in the string. We have this tension. So the only thing missing in this equation is Q. So doing the algebra, we're going to get Q equals, well, let's solve for Q squared. Q squared is going to be equal to R squared 
cosine 82t uh, over k. And then what we do is square root both sides, take the square root of both sides, and we can pull out this r. So q is going to be r times cosine 82t over k. And then we punch in. So then r we found out to be 0.1113 multiplied by square root of uh, cosine 82. Uh, the tension is 4.9482 newtons uh, all over K, and K is 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared over coulomb squared. That's a 9. Uh, and then this gives us an answer of um, 9.74 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs, which is the answer.